Hello, 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 and also hello and welcome to the stream. It's Thinky Thursday. We're normally doing a modding workshop, but we're not this week because the Stanley Parable Ultra, De Ultra Deluxe came out, and it's very exciting, and I'm really looking forward to playing it. We played it yesterday for a couple of hours, and it was wonderful, and we're going to play more of it today. We're going to carry on uh, with our playthrough, and it's going to be amazing. So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing, and you can all just deal with it if you don't want that, but you, you will want that because it's brilliant, so we're going to do it. It's going to be great. Hello, so, yes, good. Hope you enjoyed the sing song. Um, I sing song, song sing good, yes. Um, and now I will load up the game and we can get started. I was really annoyed yesterday because what I wanted to do was upload some of the recording of the session yesterday as a VOD. But uh, when I went to download my Twitch VOD, it didn't have the audio attached. Because it turns out Streamlabs have introduced an audio setting uh, for Twitch's whole copyright thing. Um, you know, because Twitch are quite keen on enforcing uh, music copyright these days. So they'd introduced an audio setting that was automatically checked to remove the game audio from your VOD. So that was automatically checked. So all my VODs recently haven't had any game audio attached to them. Nobody's told me. I don't know whether anyone watches the VODs. But like, so that wasn't there. So I haven't got any recording of the game audio. So I couldn't use the video, which is really irritating because I wanted to, uh, wanted to upload that a bit. But there you go. Anyway. Never mind, I've unchecked the box now, so hopefully all future Twitch VODs should have all the game audio. I mean, the audio was there, but it was only the audio that was picked up through my microphone. So like, yeah, so as Mr. Video Freak says, you could hear the game audio just slightly, you could hear the background audio being picked up through my microphone, but the actual audio track from the game that my PC was recording, nada, not included. Very annoying! There you go. Such is life. Oh, did someone ping me in the streaming channel and I didn't see it? Oh, okay. Well, there you go then. That's my fault for not paying attention. Anyway, right. Let's uh, let's start the thing. Hopefully it'll, re it'll have saved our progress from last time. I haven't actually loaded it up since. I'm assuming it'll let us load back into the same place. If it doesn't, that'll be very sad. Ooh, I need to bring up my laptop so that I can actually read what you guys are saying to me while I'm playing. Oh, Stanley, what a parable. He's a lovely Stanley and he's doing a parable. And it's a very good parable, but what's it parabling? We don't know. Not to be confused with the Stanley parabola, which has its ups and downs. It's a little, little maths joke for you there. Um, don't know whether that went in. Just trying to connect with my laptop before I can actually read the chat. <laughs> We're nearly there. Sorry, my laptop's not connecting to Twitch. Uh, the answer to that question, Priob, is yes. It's an updated version of the original game that's also a sequel to the original game in a way that only really makes sense when you play it. Which is so wonderful, really, and so classic Stanley Parable that they've done it like that. Nope, still won't connect. Come on, connect to the internet. Gonna say my catchphrase here. Bear with me. I wanna be the very best that no one ever was. To catch them is my real test. To train them in my goals. Thank you so much for the sub, Miskatonic. Oh, was the VOD watchable? Because, as I say, I only picked up the audio from my microphone rather than the game audio. Very frustrating, but I'm glad you managed to watch the VOD at least. Anyway, I've fixed the setting now. So, um, future, future VODs should actually have the game audio. 
Stanley sat at his desk. The screen read, please enter the current time, yet Stanley chose to ignore this and mess around with a laptop. There you go, it's working now. Right, confirm the current time. It is... Oh no, hang on. It told us last time that we were allowed to go ahead and just leave the time at 12 p.m. Didn't it? That was our reward last time for setting it so diligently. Oh, yes, it was your favourite time of day. That was it. We're allowed to put my favourite. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Ah, 12pm. It is my favourite time of day. Now I think about it, because you're right in the middle of the day, so it works. Your favourite time of day. Or could you simply not resist giving me the correct time again? After all, I know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, now I'm curious how accurate 12pm is. Let's use another slider to find out. How accurate is 12pm? I'll be honest, it's it's pretty inaccurate. You know, can I just say, regardless of the accuracy of the clock, I'm having a great time adjusting these settings. I feel like I'm learning more about you and how you like things to be set. It's good to collect data. I wish we had more sliders, but we've gone through all the sliders I have. Hmm. Perhaps I can invent some new sliders to gather new data on you. Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, let me whip a couple new ones up. Should be ready by the next time you boot up the game. Yes, here we are. It has remembered our saved our progress from last time. The Stanley Parable 2. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he well, pushed buttons on the keyboard. The same intro again. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Can you hear me? Ninja said that they couldn't hear me then. Can you guys hear my voice? Yep, yeah, you can hear my voice. Fabulous. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Are you saying the audio is too loud today? Because that makes no sense. Oh, look! Look! It's the bucket! It's the reassurance bucket! Stanley picked up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. <laughs> I don't know, I'll just, I'll go left, fine. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. 
Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh. Oh. oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand <laughs> over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your <laughs> companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons. But even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? <laughs> well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. I... I like... buckets? Nice. Um, we... Okay, okay. I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> there. <laughs> now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. I kind of, do I need to just leave now, or will he say more? All right, <laughs> I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see, <laughs> I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, oh, it's a bucket. <laughs> there really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. This is brilliant. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh, a collectible! You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savour each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. You know, very nice bathroom. Very good. I like it. Good magazines, extreme bathrooms, and also time. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. 
Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. I can't remember ever being able to go into the executive bathroom. It was always locked whenever I've tried it. I think we might well, Ace. I think that might happen. If we have to incinerate the bucket, the you know, elevator raced down, all over again. plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. I mean, I'm just doing the ordinary ending with the bucket, but... Have they recorded dialogue for every, every original ending, now with Bucket? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office yes, was of being videotaped, free, Mr. monitored free. like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, Why would and I it want very to nearly Sorry, burst no, into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, That's reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labelled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool <laughs> way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Stanley and the Bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. 
The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. <laughs> Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... <laughs> what? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty, until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms, not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room, but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. I have no idea where this is going. No! I don't have my bucket anymore! It's gone! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Figurine finders today, meeting today in the meeting room. Ah. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms and a wave of comfort rushed over him. I has bucket again. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. No. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Figurines ideas can we sell them? More money if sold together. Which liability do we need contacts for them? Boy 41 building a bridge. Saw one in cargo room. What do they want? Should we make them employees? Interns? Yes. <laughs> Why do they look like 47? Why are they floating? Okay, start the presentation again. Nope, did I miss it? I missed the present. Oh no, hang on. How can we find them? Bottom text. Figurine. Maybe we are the collectibles. What we know. Small floating objects have appeared across the office. We have to synergize our resources to ensure their retrieval. There are many questions. There was no memo from management. Agenda. How can you tell you spotted one? What makes them float in the air? Who took these pictures of them? Big leaves are hard to find. Follow clues provided by employee 416. We well, can do it. Red room. What? Don't know. Good. Thank you. Good luck. To whom it may concern, 
I managed to pick up sounds unusual to our regular office ambiences or local audio sources using an array of cardioid microphones, also known as directional mic, a microphone which picks up sound from a particular area. Analysis of the recordings allowed me to triangulate the source of the strange noise. Data shows that, in all likelihood, it's coming from a dark area behind a very warm place. I also picked up what looked to be a reverberance of a porcelain surface. Anyone have any leads on this? Wouldn't you like to know? So I feel like these are clues as to where you can find the collectibles. There will be a reward for finding them all. Please do not leave the office before reporting back on any new findings. Teamwork and communication of great importance during this unprecedented time of investigation. Mission status. Place to search. Inside of a secret- Ah, so this is keeping track of where they are. A large room, lots of boxes. Stairs, something with stairs. Somewhere both red and blue. Nearby a fireplace. Private was many places for an important person, so that's the bathroom. Oh, this is fun. I want to go home. <laughs> Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. Broom. Bucket. No? Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. One second. Okay, so I was just checking where um, there's a particular ending I didn't want to do on stream because um, it's particularly dark and I just wanted to make sure we'd avoided that. Um, let's try going down here. Ha! Ah! Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or... Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. <laughs> Thank you, Skyrim Steve. Glad you like it. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Oh, Who knows bucket. what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, oh gracious, he exclaimed. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! Stanley, it's me! The bucket! Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by ah, one bucket. bucket after the next. No. None of them were his. None oh. of them were his special bucket. <laughs> Come to me, Stanley! Find me! He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, it froze dead in his tracks. 
He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought, and she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. I, I feel like, I don't know, obviously, and I don't want it to be spoiled. I'm getting the sensation that they've re-recorded every original ending with buckets. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the, the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Who is better? Bucket or companion? Do you mean companion cube? Ooh, I think Bucket beats Companion Cube. Truly, being here with the Bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right. Then walking to the lounge. Then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey the Bucket had inspired. Perhaps this was where the Bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. That's actually, you can actually, I don't know whether you guys can read that text. Stanley decided to just give the bucket absolutely as much time as it needed to be in the lounge. Clearly the bucket and the employee lounge shared a special connection. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge, and they took the first open door on their left to get back to business. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. What about this one? I can't remember where this goes. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. Oh, what? Huh. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? 
We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. <laughs> now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. No, 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 no. I keep Bucket. Bucket is mine. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. No. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. No. No, 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 no. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. No. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. No. I take it away. I go now. Not the Bucket in the machine. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your Bucket. Destroying Buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like 10 personality <laughs> traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. No, Give I the refuse. fans what they want. Hurry and... Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Maybe I should have destroyed the bucket. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. <laughs> Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. I feel like that might have been the way to progress the plot. As no, it were. said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Ow. I think the clues said there was a collectible in here. Somewhere. Good. There it is. The there now it is. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. How do we get there? Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. 
It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. There's like a vent that comes out down there. Oh, well, I've missed my opportunity now. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home where we can go about life together. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Where's the bucket? Oh, there he is. Hello, Stanley. It's me, your bucket. Press L to take me to work with you. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Press H to take me back home with you. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. So you'd go back to work? Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Yes, it does. Listen to the loud man press his head for us to go back home. You see, he's not listening. He's still oh, taking gosh. orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is this awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. to ignore anyone in your life except for me. I feel this bucket sad. has become toxic. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. You believe I'm real, don't you, Stanley? Press B to go back home. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. So I'll relive the same day with me over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Work to home to work to home. Oh no. I'm I'm having feelings for the bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes, the bucket could tell oh, me what me. to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... This is very weird. Hello Mary, welcome to the stream. This will be very bizarre for you if you don't know this game. We're playing the new Stanley Parable and it is bizarre. Do you have a gaming channel now? Is this a thing? 
Is this a new thing you've set up? Thank you so much for the subs, Anonymous Gifter. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again, not truly alone, not with the bucket around. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Oh, it's the same one with a new name. This was uh, not okay, the correct that makes way to sense. the meeting well, thank room. thank you for the raid. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door right, on his left. Right, let's see if I can to find how to get to the down to the, room. um... That new no, bridge. said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. The go there. To go to the cargo we lift. can't obviously jump through. Ah, but we can go up like... Ah! Ha ha! Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one. Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Kevin Brighting voices the narrator. See ya, Alex. Right. Oh, it's very dark. Oh, boy, where are we now? Bit ominous. Narrator sound system. Okay, this is day number 295. Take number. I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This... It's my golden ticket, but I have to be careful because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? Was that what <laughs> what in the world all of his co-workers were gone what could it mean 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. How to use help windows dot window dot exe. Can't quite read it, but right, right. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Where should we go now? What's next on our list of adventures? We could go... We could go left. Somewhere both red and blue and nearby a fireplace. Well, there's a fireplace in the boss's office. Stanley, we must move on from okay. this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. But there was already one in the executive bathroom, so... Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the... But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Maybe it's a different fireplace. Because there's no, you know, there's no particular figurine anywhere around there. So let's try going. I'm sure there are lots of places with fires and fire in it. I'm sure there are. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. I can't remember whether you could go back up in the original Stanley Parable. Maybe you could. I don't know. I don't remember doing it. I don't know whether it ever occurred to me to try it. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket... After taking some time to show the bucket around the boss's office, Stanley at last went to the keypad where he began eagerly pressing the number three again and again. Is that, is that it? I feel like something might have broken there. I interrupted the narrator. Oh, it doesn't say eight. Okay, I don't think anything further is happening here. Oops. Not what I wanted to do. Two, eight, four, five. Does that do anything doing that again? No, okay, cool. Well, there you go, that was maybe broken. Not quite sure what was meant to happen there. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got oh, from right, slamming okay. the number three repeatedly. Can I go back up again? No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket 
and the bucket said nothing. I just love how much detail they put into this. It's so ridiculous. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all, only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. See, everything you can possibly do, they have thought of really, haven't they? Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? Nothing this time? said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others it would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. Oh, oh wow. Oh, For we're really months, doing he this. advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. <laughs> you think of the world peace, baby. Doing great, a conversation with Alexander the Great. Gosh. I love this how much was it. They put into this one last thing. chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from, your co workers. There was no one here. Oh no. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak. Oh, that's devastating. To listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting. He was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit. Only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness.
Well, that was cheerful. Shall we, um... Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself. That's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Well, my relationship with the bucket appears to be restored. Or should I cast it into the fire now? I guess if I go down the lift again, it will give me another opportunity. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply I think the this place may be the to time. be. Yeah, and but... here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Let's see what Stanley happens if I go the down door again. Left to go back. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Oh, good Stanley. No, please I'm don't glad tell you me found your way here. Toby. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because oh, we so care does. about you very much. I thought it might much. have. I thought it might have it's an alternative set of dialogue, having come back for a second everywhere. time. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. Oh, that's it's just sequel content. Oh, well. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet, because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're we spending too already. much time with it. Oh, there is Don't a fire you want place, another that's story true. involving the adventure line? But we can no make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Nope, none here. There may be more collectibles. We. Look at that wacky line. Who I mean, knows where it'll go places. off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now oh, this right. is Maybe what I the Stanley Parable is all about. Oh, well. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. Okay. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I'm sorry, Bucket. It's time. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, oh. and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. It won't let me. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. It's not a thing. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you say that a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved all the buttons, but it won't characters. go. Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What they other object in this game can you wouldn't. even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket what? Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable gag like the adventure line or the bucket destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. No, it Quickly now, this. the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Oh, well, there you go. 
Oh. I'm kind of disappointed by that. The bucket destroyer. My prized creation. That it was only an illusion so of choice, but also... We were going to do such marvellous of works, things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. Know, you know, you thought you had a choice and you didn't, and they were now. so confident we wouldn't Goodbye, throw, try and throw the bucket. new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Yeah, no, it wouldn't let me, Bard. I was holding down the button that was up against an invisible barrier. And, um, and clicking just made it... Made it do that. Right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could what it, mean? it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Yoink. A good bucket. A strong bucket. A humble bucket. A committed bucket. A bucket of culture and distinction. That is uh, actually what people call me. They say that Joseph, he is a bucket of culture and Stanley distinction. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door right. on his left to go back to the meeting room. Now, one of the things in the meeting room no, said a place with a red and a blue bucket. door. Don't go to and the meeting I'm room. Cool, go somewhere I think else. You can get to that a cargo here. lift. Yes, go there. G Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. No, I think it gets us Stanley closer did to not that question why that or I didn't how this to, bucket was I'm not going to take him. that option. It should have alarmed him, of course, because so buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Danger! Danger everywhere! No, stop! Look there on the wall, you see? There's a sign right there. It <laughs> says, no buckets pass this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless... What if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. <laughs> now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item one, is this a bucket? No. Correct. It oh, is a hologram of matter. a bucket, not an actual oh, bucket. Oh, oh, it does. <laughs> okay. Right. Item two, is this a bucket? No. Correct. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, <laughs> not an actual bucket. Item three, is this a bucket? No. Incorrect. This is a bucket. <laughs> Item four, is this a bucket? Yes. What? Are you hallucinating? <laughs> this is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> this machine that tells you. Yeah. Alright, okay, right. Is okay. this a bucket? Yes. Correct. What? This is a bucket. Don't elaborate. Don't it doesn't elaborate! It doesn't elaborate! <laughs> That's brilliant. Item six. Is this a bucket? 
Uh. Yes. Trick question. Both. Gotcha. What? <laughs> Item. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, you and I both know <laughs> there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something. And therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? Yes. You know what? I'm too confused <laughs> to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. <laughs> And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Mm. Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, yeah. and myself oh, was all I ever had to begin with. Okay. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets no. from the game and No, 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 no. Okay. Here we no. go. No, don't do that. Don't erase the bucket. What happened? Is everything gone? Oh, because everything, everything was a bucket. It was everything a bucket? <laughs> Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my God, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. The word bucket's gone weird yes, now. I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Right. Already okay. this was uncomfortable, so, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. The red and blue door room was, is across that walkway, as I recall, and we can't get into it with the bucket. So I'm not going to take the bucket this time. Because we need to get to that room to get the collectible. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And here it was, the lounge. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Everything that isn't a person is a bucket. Yeah, I think we can all Stanley get Stanley was that. so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked Aha! through the red door. Ha ha ha! You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. <laughs> Very soon, you'll collect the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now we have them all. <laughs> you can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Well, good. Should we... Well, I guess we might as well persevere. So, blue door. Aha. Perhaps ah. you misunderstood. 
Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Blue. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Do you see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Go on, then. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. So this is, um, original Stanley Parable content. Aha! But I haven't played you it see, in ages, I knew so I was onto something. Where do these flashes it. of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly. A calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hmm. No, it's not a real leaderboard. Right. Oh, I can't go that way. Oh, all that way. Um. Is that a bug? The ra narrator is not saying anything. I think this is an actual proper bug in the Stanley Parable and not, in fact, part of the story. Well, that's fun. Let's begin the game again. It's funny, really. You have so much... One has so much trust in the game. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? You don't instantly there was a computer, see a perhaps, and a painting. You know, was you it trust a painting that it's or a photo? It's very strange. He could no longer recall. Find it. Um, it actually has a bug in it. Anyway, bucket. Ah, the embrace of an old friend, a weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? remember how you do there's a sort of maybe you can't do it here I can't remember which room you can do it in is it it's, I don't think it is this room and I'm not getting the effect on anything so how long do I think I'll play today oh I don't know maybe another 45 minutes until I come to a natural end point Da 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 Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Right. 
nearby a fireplace. That's what it says. Oh, this was the plan to get the one in the warehouse. One, produce one plank to allow ease of access past the fence. Two, construct bridge to allow collection of shiny float. Three, retrieve Chris's remains from warehouse floor. Four, construct a new structurally sound bridge. We need more planks. Oh. Right, so it says nearby a fireplace. But it wasn't near the... Yeah, there are hints around. So let's look again at these. Because I can't remember the original game that well. See, that's a hint showing it in the executive bathroom. Yeah, there is the bit with the baby, but I can't remember for the life of me how you get there. But we went to the fireplace in the boss's office. I don't know where else there is one. But we can just keep going. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. <laughs> Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Yeah, we got the red was and blue the door one. Guiding him. Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Yep, we got the one in the executive bathroom. Wait, did I miss something? You said behind me. I'm going back up. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began okay, absolutely so slamming on the number three me. over and over and over. When I went over here, did it despawn because it went back up? I don't know. We can find out. <laughs> oh, we started in a different room. All it of does his coworkers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed mm, by no, the weight of this it. revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Right. So you said you saw it behind me. Yeah, there it and is. There it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this moment, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many people expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. So, 
Instead, I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. Is that it? That's it. Amazing. Maybe there's more to it when we go back around again. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large Ooh, door that read we're going left. Mind Control Sign, Facility. Escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Whee! As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the Bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the Bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the Bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a Bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Oh, crumbs. And... Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the Bucket were led helplessly into the enormous <laughs> metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the Bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. Oh, is it Rosamund Pike? I never knew who did the original voice acting for that, but whoever it is, they obviously got her back. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. It does sound like her. The bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within a cavernous void. But through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full and enriched and substantiated. Knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you learn here out with you into the world? Will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit? Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were in ignorance and darkness? Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Where will it go? It's still rising. Does it stop? Does it disappear? It stops. It stops. Okay. Ah, 25 buckets. No, that is more than that. A photograph of 25 buckets, the greatest number of buckets ever captured on camera. The photographer experienced catatonic shock for several weeks as a result of the euphoria from exposure to this many buckets at once. A bucket with two handles. This bucket is depicted as having two handles. Such a design has never been created in real life, having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental. Every year, dozens are put to death just for attempting it. Ooh, a chair. Well, that's nice. There is something up there. Something written on the wall. Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe the path. Oh, there's a staircase. Yeah. Inferno bucket. 
A replica of the Inferno Bucket, which in the medieval era was so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another for control of it. Billions died, and yet, in spite of it all, the simple fact remains, no one can control a bucket. I take? No, I not take. Doesn't work. Cave drawing. While we know that buckets predate the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long. This cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical uses of the bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The hanging bucket. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of reach. This distance, inevitably, is for our own good. I may consider it, Bard. It is amazing how much, isn't it? Should we should we do it? I think that might be the bottomless hole. Ah! Look! I can I can take I take the bucket. But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Of the Oh, she says something different than the PlayStation version, does she? Oh, that's a fun detail. Well, there we go. It's very clever. So oh. Stanley, I'm sorry, but what? I have to put a pause on things. It's just, it's those figurines, those figlies. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Didn't it fill you to the brim with inner richness? Yes, I know we're supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? Oh. I would love nothing more than to revisit the figurines just one more time. Now remembering when Stanley found the collectibles. Here's where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, Stanley. Seven out of six? What? What? Nothing appears to be ha oh, we can go this way. Objective bathroom. And here was a second Stanlerine. Oh, good you how found this one all on your own, just by poking around in the boss's bathroom. You did that, Stanley. I'll be honest. Back then I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable ways. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room oh. you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? I think it was under the stairs. Hey, 
Hey, that's exactly right. It was here under the stairs. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. Oh, that's really distressing. Now those numbers don't, you know, it doesn't fit anymore. Nine out of six. Uh, oh, that's quite weird. The way the, that just carries on round. Let's see, what came next? Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. No, we didn't. Oh, well, I can't actually say I remember what? being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. <laughs> what? What is this? This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was by the red and blue doors. I remember it so clearly. In fact, because this one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. <laughs> Takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. They both go to oh, they both go to the same place. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here behind the boss's office. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the others. Who can truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other. Except for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. What is going on? And then You're in the there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. Um, no, Wait, no, what? no, I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Oh, wow. Oh, I love how it just keeps surprising okay, you. Okay, yes. The back of the boss's office. I remember this. I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? <laughs> Yes, I love that video. Yoink. What is happening? Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. I like the apple. Where did we find this one? This was the one we got in the warehouse. That was it. So they've changed the warehouse out for the pink room. 
These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? No, yes, I remember one. it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. Oh no, this, this is the is first it. one. This is the right, very yes, first sorry, one yes. we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? It says exit below here. Ah. Oh, this is back in the collectible exhibit. Look, it's Jump the circle. terrible new content that we were originally sold on. I remember hating it back then, but time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. Oh, yes! The two doors! Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. I remember before this whole story got started. Back then I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way I stopped making decisions. I became lazy. And I came up with, well, came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions, he would decide which way to go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But ah, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes, I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay, here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. I like that theory, Rose. Oh, we are the narrator's bucket. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Well, the bucket's coming with me for the last run. Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky run. fellow. Very lucky indeed. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Oh, it's just gone Still back. no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than now ever. We have all the Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Stanley, we must move okay. on from this yeah. broom Fine. closet. Just simply checking. because I have no remaining stick. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Ooh. Wow. 
Oh, I vaguely remember this being a thing. It doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. Anyway, right, there we go. I wondered if there would be some kind of new bucket related content for that, but there is not. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind, Mind Control, Control Facility. Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. No spoilers please, Zombo. But yes, I have. Monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that Look, everything that would be fine. Anyway, on we go. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence time, as well? It? Had the bucket been told to do things no, it didn't wish to do? Again. What kinds no, of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. But at the oh. last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Bucket betrayal! Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. What? Uh, bird or bird? Uh, I think bird. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. 
This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. I'm enjoying the birds Stanley greatly. and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Huh? Well, that was fun. Ooh, phone call. let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Cute. The music warps when, um, it, if you, it's because if your internet connection goes slow, it will warp because you're watching in low latency mode. So if you turn off low latency mode, you won't get the music warping anymore. It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. I Stanley thought... clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I thought that was supposed to be our last run. And then the whole thing was supposed to be concluded. Oh, were we supposed to try the original ending again? Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth okay. and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked well, yeah, upstairs could be just to the, end the boss's never the end, office. It feels a bit anticlimactic if that is all there is to it. I'm going to speed run it. Stepping into the his manager's again, office, Stanley different. was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. I gotta say, I wasn't really expecting the new Stanley Parable to be quite so heavily bucket based. Like, the bucket has become a large chunk of the narrative. Stanley and the bucket walk Just straight ahead through the barbed sort of door that read Mind Control Facility. Lights rose on an enormous room packed yeah, with television screens. Now, what horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. Go, 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 go. Yes, the bucket is part the of the deluxe edition. To life, and Stanley nearly dropped That's the bucket in shock. The ultra Everyone Parable in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, yeah. reassuring yeah. it that everything would be fine. Uh -huh. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Does the bucket had the bucket things? been told no. to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone I else's control. Never! Or he squeezed than the, the bucket dialogue. tighter. His one friend in the because entire the world. Run achievement for At this point, a he could trust of, like, no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. 
the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, yeah. eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that... Th Stanley no, this in the, is the same as before. waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. What? Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest bucket. enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Well, there might be nothing. We might Excitedly, be just sort of the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they reason. wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the Bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room. Lingering in uncertainty. Okay. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want yeah, the bucket I'm to leave. Let it play out. See it Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket. Needed the soothing warmth of the bucket. Or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. No Perhaps bucket. he had simply missed a memo. Wait. I thought this was something interesting there, but never mind. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, hang on. I've just I've just googled it. Just googled to uh, check something. Oh, it's not there. Okay, that's interesting. So the internet says, which I know I shouldn't really do, but I wanted to just check. It says there should be a button here that isn't here. Having completed the collectibles ending. So I need to look into that. I think I'm probably gonna end the stream there for today. And we will, um, if I find out, you know, if I will, I will resume another stream. Oh, it saves automatically, don't worry. I'll resume, I'll do another stream resuming at the point where we got to, uh, you know, resuming at, you know, if I find the next thing for you guys so that you guys don't miss it, and then if you're not, you know, whenever that is, if you're not watching, you'll obviously be on a VOD or something, I'll let you guys know. But anyway, I think we'll park it there for this evening because we have done a couple of hours. Um, but yeah, I'm going to head off. Is there anyone to raid? Dark Fox is streaming Skyrim stuff, so if we want to, uh have the promise of Skyrim, which we were meant to have this evening, except we're playing Stanley Parable because I wanted to. Um, you can w have some Thinky Thursday modding goodness over with Dark Fox, which I'm going to start a raid now, I think. So do jump in on that. But yes, hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed playing it with you. There will be another stream exploring the next part of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe when I figured it out. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye.